Hey, my name is Kevin Parzik. I am a physician and I work for Wilshire Health and Community Services as their chief medical officer. We're gonna talk about the COVID vaccine and try to dispel some of the myths and share good information with you folks. It's important that you understand the science so that you can feel comfortable about it. And here's the basic, easy way to understand it. A vaccine is basically, no matter what it is, a vaccine is trying to prime your immune system, right? Your immune system is your, basically it's your military for your body. It's what defends you against whether it's a splinter in your finger or strep throat or COVID, your body has the immune system to fight things off. So what we're doing with a vaccine is we're more or less training your body to identify these foreign invaders, attack and kill them before they can multiply and cause the actual disease, right? Makes sense. So we've been doing vaccines for quite a while now and had phenomenal results. You know, we basically eradicated polio except for a few outbreaks here and there. Uh, a lot of long-term diseases that causes a lot of death and mortality. Um, over the years, we take it for granted now that we don't deal with a lot of whooping cough and we don't deal with a lot of other diseases. So we've taken vaccines for granted. Take a flu vaccine, for example. They would look at a flu, a flu virus and say, okay, on the outer surface of this little virus thing, what is something unique to that? What is a little protein expressed that tells me it's that flu virus and not chicken pox or something else? And then we duplicate that little protein, that little thing, and give it to you. And then your body says, hey, every time I see that thing, I got to attack it. It's kind of like I always use the analogy of um, the old Volkswagen Beetles. They're the only uh, car that had round headlights for a long time. So every time you see a round headlight in your rear view mirror, you could say, that's a Volkswagen Beetle, right? It's not like I'm giving you the whole car. I'm not throwing the whole car at you engine and all. I'm just giving you the headlight. So it doesn't cause the disease. So in the coronavirus vaccine, using the old school method, what they did is they took those little crown things that are on the surface. Everyone has seen the picture of the little crowns, which is why it's called the Corona virus. Corona means crown. And they manufacture them in a lab and they give you through injection, these little things, these little proteins. Then your body attacks it, builds antibodies, which is what you use to grab onto those things and say, hey, kill this. And then those antibodies stay in your system so that if you're exposed to real coronavirus, you'll identify it, attack it, and kill it quickly. The new vaccine, the mRNA stuff that just came out is really cool. What we're doing is instead of making a protein, a foreign protein made in a lab somewhere and then giving it to you, we're basically giving you the blueprint for how to make those proteins yourself. So we're taking your cells and turning them into more or less a manufacturing center to make some of these proteins so they're more natural to you, but you still have the same response where you make antibodies and you attack and kill them. Speaking to the safety of the vaccine or what you can expect, for most people getting this vaccine is as simple as getting the flu shot. For most people, they barely even feel the injection. Uh, for most people, it's a localized reaction with just kind of a sore arm for a couple of days. Some people, again, for a couple of days might feel just kind of a little off, tired, a little achy just in general, maybe a low-grade fever, maybe certainly below 101 um, is to be expected because, again, those are all signs that your immune system is revved up and it's having a response, which is what you want. So don't be scared by that. A lot of people have concerns and have heard stories about allergies and that you shouldn't get this if you have allergies like food allergies or uh, seasonal allergies like hay fever. And the truth is that is all not true. The CDC recommendation at this point is saying that unless you have had a specific reaction to an injectable medication, so you've had a um, antibiotic shot or you've had a vaccine where you had a true life-threatening reaction, we call it anaphylaxis, where you stopped breathing, you had to go to the emergency room, all of that, then you should really think about this and talk with your doctor about whether or not to get this. Uh, number one, this cannot give you COVID. There is no live virus involved in this, uh, the production of this. It cannot make you sick with COVID. Number two, there are no uh, GPS locators or microchips uh, secondarily implanted into this vaccine. Third of all, there are no 
fetal tissues involved in the injection that is totally false. But here's the truth. This stuff never even gets close to your DNA. It cannot alter your DNA in any way, shape, or form. It does not even last in your body. It's kind of like if your DNA is the master architect for building a house, the mRNA is just this little set of blueprints that the master architect just sends out to the cell to say, hey, go build the kitchen. Here's the design for the kitchen. Once you build it, tear them up and throw them away. Really critical to understand is that this vaccine does not mean you won't get COVID, okay? When you've had two injections, and it is critical that you get two, one shot does not protect you. Two shots gives you a 95% chance that if and when you get COVID, you don't move on to having a severe illness and the risk of death. This is important, guys. That means that there's a 5% chance you still could get symptoms from a COVID infection. And you certainly could contract the virus, right, as your body is waiting to fight this thing off. And then the question is, could you be then transmitting it? The important take home message on this is get the vaccine, but don't think this is a get out of jail free card and you can run around without a mask and do whatever you want. You, we still have to practice social distancing and wearing masks and staying home when mandated and being very, very cautious. I would recommend that if you feel like you're a candidate and you want to get the vaccine to go to your public health department website or give them a call to find out what are the local um, availability, the scheduling, and whether or not you're a candidate at that time.